All right, ladies and gentlemen, with us now is one of my childhood friends. It's John Svoboda. And originally, I thought he lives in Kansas now, but he doesn't. He lives in Kansas City, Missouri. But if you're from St. Louis, like we are originally, anything that's like east of St. Louis, you might as well be in Kansas. But um, he's a wonderful guitarist. I'm so happy that he's joining me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's John Svoboda. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, and I was joking with you in the green room. I even know how to say Svoboda correctly. You learned that as a child. I did. Which, <laughs> you knew it, I think in second grade, you knew to say Svoboda. There you go. It's a beautiful name. So your journey, um, I remember you as a teenager playing at Six Flags, and that was a big a big mm -hmm. gig. That's right. Right? Yeah. So tell us about those days, the early days. Uh, the early days, well, you know, I started like a lot of people. Somebody gave me a guitar as a kid, and I learned some songs. My first song was Dueling Banjos. I knew that for about a year and a half. Really? Did you hear <laughs> me singing that before, too? I, no. I said da 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 I didn't. <laughs> and you know who taught me that was Larry Gerst. Oh, really? And I understand you used to wear his pick on your necklace. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he taught me that. Did you just say that? It's the truth. I'm blushing. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I'd like me to, because now I have to tell the audience about why I wore his pick. All right? Okay. Larry, uh, I'm just going to talk to the camera. Okay. Larry Gerst is cute. Okay, and so I met him at a talent show, and I was a little younger, and so he was the guy that was like singing songs from Bread, you know, and uh, he had a white guitar pick, and I asked him if I could have it, so then I punched a hole in it, and I wore it as a necklace. Okay, teenager things, you know? <laughs> All right, so anyway, he helped you. I didn't know that. He got me started with okay. it, and he was a great inspiration. He showed me that it could be done, and it wasn't long after that in junior high that we formed the band called Pegasus. I don't know if you remember that Yes, I that do one. remember the name. And we had uh, Mark Torlina, Micah Grusa and the three girl background singers and we were okay you know for seventh and eighth grade and that turned into the Dragons of Eden which played at Six Flags over mid-America and then I moved to uh, Emporia Kansas in my senior year and that's when I took up classical guitar. Now classical guitar tell us the difference between you know some guitars have six strings some have 12 but okay. what makes a classical guitar or is it just the songs that you're playing on the guitar that make it classical. Two things mainly okay. is uh, on a classical guitar the strings are nylon. Okay. Uh, a good reference would be Jose Feliciano. He had nylon string guitar. And he had kind of a Spanish sound, and that. But the other is the actual repertoire that is played on the instrument. And there's a melody and a bass line together that. Um, if I could. Sure, a little, please. Yeah. So, so you, teach on a, me. On a okay. Okay. Uh, guitar. There's a lot of this. Classical guitar, you may hear a melody with a bass line under it. Same guitar, but it's yeah. how you play it. That's a Taylor. That's a nice guitar. That is, yeah, that's a Taylor. I enjoy that guitar. That's my yeah. travel guitar. Gotcha. And yeah. you sent me pictures. We're going to take a look at these pictures. What is this other guitar that we're looking at that you said is priceless to you? It is a 1934 Gibson L00. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually, it's an old blues guitar. It's like a Robert Johnson style guitar. Um, a long story short on it, it was given to me when I was 17 years old. And it was a piece of junk. It was torn apart. Somebody had painted it. Uh, it was given to me, uh, handed down from an uncle who had died, a great uncle who had died, who I didn't know very well. I took the guitar and I learned how to fix guitars by using it. And I ripped it apart, I took the finish off. Years later I found out this thing had the most amazing tone. And it is what I used on the, the latest album. And that, the latest it's album not is a classical. no bow tie, okay, no bow tie, and no bow tie means no bow tie, right? So tell us about this latest project that you're doing because this is a combination of a genre that you helped create with some friends mm -hmm. where you mixed classic guitar with bluegrass. Absolutely. It's a fun album. Um, so my whole career was in classical guitar and the repertoire there. And I, I think about 30 years of playing classical guitar. And one day I was wandering around the house, literally wandering around the house, and I knew there could be more done with these classical pieces. I knew they could be fun. The composers did not write these pieces to be put in textbooks. It's, and that's how we receive them. They're examples of perfection from the history. I, one day I thought, we can move that up a notch. We can make Bach better. We can make Mozart more fun. Yeah, and that's the response I get from people. Bach better. <laughs> and so I said, yeah, I, I think it can be done. And so I said, first of all, let's put a beat to this thing. Let's get this thing to groove. People want to have fun. 
People that listen to it, from kids to you know, uh, country western fans, they listen to this, they love it. Absolutely and you know what happens it. for me is after it's over, I want like a few more cuts on it, right? Do you know what I'm right. saying? So, so ha there's eight, right? Mm -hmm. I can use 16. So can you write and, and make like eight more? I'm in. You're in production. <laughs> the next it? album is happening. Okay. And it's so exciting. I have yeah. to be honest with you. When I first got it, I was so excited. I put it on right away. I decorated my whole house for Christmas by it. I played it over and over All and right. over again because it does. It has this uplifting, motivating, fun, um, happiness to it, yeah. right? And so now when I, I do, I clean my house to you. So the other day when uh, we were Facebooking back and forth, we were talking about, you know, you guys coming here or whatever, I was listening to your music. So I enjoy it. It's an enjoyable oh, you. Uh, yeah. project that you guys put together. Who did you work? Uh, there's some people also that collaborated on this with you. Fantastic musicians. Okay. I started this without anyone in mind. I, I was actually going to do the whole thing myself. And it was suggested to me, uh, suggested to me by Sky Smead, who's a singer-songwriter uh, in Kansas City. He suggested checking out Mike and Katie West of Truck Stop Honeymoon. We met, we exchanged some ideas, and the next thing I know, we're already playing. We're already doing the arrangements, putting a banjo with Bach. We're already moving <laughs> this through. Everyone was having a blast. We couldn't stop rehearsing, and next thing you know, we've got we've got an album out that none of us knew was coming. It's doing well too. No bow tie. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's the only one like it. Yeah, well, there <laughs> so, you go, yeah. one of a kind, right? Yeah, it's, like, it's fun, it. and it's the only one like it. So yeah. hey, go get it. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, how about radio play? Have you decided to send it to a few different radio stations yet, or? That's a tough one because okay. uh, radios tend to play a genre or a style in that. But I had. Um, the radio station 91.5 in Lawrence, Kansas, they played it as soon as I sent it to him. He, uh, Bob McWilliams put it on his show Trail Mix, which is a good mixture of acoustic music, everything from uh, singer-songwriter to kind of a folky sound. And he put it on there and said some kind words about it. He, he put my little logo of I'm taking the bow tie out of classical. And he played it and it was, you know, of course, very exciting. Very you have uplifting. stickers that have like yeah. the no bow tie <laughs> that people are putting up everywhere. I know in Kansas City, Missouri, but they've traveled, right? And they're they're like, it's kind of like graffiti-ish. Here's the they're latest not, one. You have to be careful where you stick it, I'm sure. But, yes, I okay. had a, a past student of mine lives in Europe, and he put it on the JS Box statue outside the church where he worked. And uh -huh. I'm hoping he took it back off. Right, I'm sure he would just <laughs> stick it on, take the picture, take it they off. They sent right? me a picture of it, and it's, it's the red circle with the slash and a bow tie saying, you know, no bow tie. Let's get the formal proper stuff out of here. Now, I think those stickers should be available on your website. Is that a possibility, too? They are. They are. And Good. for free. Okay. Give oh, me really? your address. I'll send you as many <laughs> as you like. It's so fun. Um, what's on the horizon for you? What's happening, John? You're going to write more of this type of music, right? Yes. I have fallen in love with the concept. The next album, we're going we're gonna to span out, and I'm going to get two percussionists involved, a violinist. Uh, Mike West, he has ideas for brass. And I'm working on symphony music, Dvorak Symphony, New World Symphony. I've got a Beethoven piece in the works. I could go down a list. I, I'm going to have to narrow it down. I have so many exciting ideas for or it. Volume 1 through 14. You could just keep doing it. The, yep. So, the No Bow Tie series. There you go. I'm, <laughs> I'm just so joyful that you're here. I, I'm honored that you and your wife flew all the way from the Midwest here to be with us today. It's just it's wonderful. It's it's great to celebrate a friend that, you know, you're so accomplished and you've well, thank done you. so many things. And I know that you've worked with so many different students and you're an inspiration to them. So, John, thank you so much. Well, I'm really you for having me. happy really. to have you here. So um, can you play just a little bit, just a little sure. something, something? Sure. I know it's not like this type of music, but you play so beautifully. Well, so. I'll, I'll play a little, a little excerpt off of there. Um, the story on this one, I, I talked to Mike and he suggested junk percussion okay. behind this. And it's on the album. And he had all of us, he stopped the recording. He turned around, right, that's, you know, he turned around, he said, he literally, he said, with an English accent, he said, run about and find things that are pleasant to bang on. <laughs> we, went out, we went out in the yard and I got a barbecue pit lid, we got a tire iron, a brick, an ax, all these things, and put it behind this. All right, I'll try to join in when I can. Okay, go please, oh, please bang something. away. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Yes. 
Yay! Did you see? I knew it. Dun, yes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's what we did. Yes. All right. Just have fun. Thank you so much. Uh, wow. Thank you for joining us on Live It Up. We hope you enjoyed our visit with John Swoboda. Uh, please take a look at his website, his wonderful stylings of music. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Wow. Yay. Oh, thanks, dun. Donna.